Hey guys, so today I'm going to give you another video on waves, um, this time wave properties. Um, this video is more towards A level, however, uh, the stuff that I'm telling you is pretty much similar to the GCSE science. So I'm going to tell you about reflection, refraction, and diffraction. Oh, and by the way, I'm also a short person, not as short, so you know, don't be like, oh my god, I'm offended, because um, it's just, you know, good humor. Anyway, so reflection, refraction, and diffraction. So again, the basics. I have here three videos, which are all GCSE revision videos, which are going to tell you the basics. Now, the fun part is if you are doing this at a level, basically what I'm telling you in the video, uh, in those GCSE videos are going to be covered uh, for your A-level course. So really, if you go on those videos, you get all the definitions you need, all the way that things work. It's just that A-level, you learn more stuff in a smaller amount of time. But in this level, is exactly the same as GCSE, okay? So you are not missing out if you're learning from those videos. However, I will uh, give you an, uh, an overview of what happens. So all waves can reflect, refract or diffract. So reflection is this first picture, well, this last picture in here. So if you have a wave that goes and hits a smooth surface, uh, once the wave is reflected, it reflects at exactly the same angle as the angle that it came into the surface. Meaning that the angle of incidence and the angle of reflection are the same. And I measure the angles using this dashed line here, which I call the normal. And the normal is perpendicular to a surface, okay? So, the law of reflection says that for a smooth and flat surface, the incident angle and the reflected angle for any wave are the same. If my surface is rough, I have several normals which are uh, at several angles between each other because I have several points where I would find a perpendicular to the surface because my surface is rough so sometimes the normal would be at one angle or the other right comparing to the other normals so what would happen is i would not have reflection or actually the reflection would happen but it would not be a clear refraction and everything would be scattered and this is the reason as i say in that video as well why you cannot see your reflection on a piece of paper but you can see in a mirror it's not about the properties on the materials itself it's about how smooth the surfaces are okay all right so that's reflection now waves can also refract if waves refract they are being transmitted from one place to the another however because there is a difference in medium the difference in the density of the sur substance where they are traveling through through the wave when it refracts or when it passes through is going to change the speed and the direction okay so a wave diff uh, refracts when it passes through a substance with a different density or a different medium um, if you are going to a denser substance it's more difficult for the wave to pass through so the angle of refraction gets smaller because kind of the wave needs to squeeze by and the speed of the wave decreases if the wave is going from a denser medium to a less dense medium, then the angle of refraction is going to increase because the wave has more space to move around because the density is lower. And again, because the density is lower, the speed of the wave is going to increase. If you have refraction happening in a glass block, for example, the waves before entering the glass block and after leaving the glass block, they will be exactly parallel to each other. So the angles in the beginning and the end are the same because the medium outside the glass block are, is the same, okay? And then finally, diffraction. Now, waves diffract when they pass through something that they see as a gap. So a gap is going to be different for different waves. So for sound waves, a door is already a gap and they diffract, sound waves diffract as they pass through the door. For light, you would have to have a very uh, tiny slit for it to be like millimeters for the light waves to diffract. If you're thinking about alpha particles, for example, and if you know about radiation, you know about the alpha particles and me putting in the same as waves and electrons, it would be a metal, a metal, um, 
a metal a, a piece of metal would be enough to make electrons for example to diffract because they would see the pieces that make the atoms that make up the metal to be uh, as a gap so electrons would pass through and diffract because as you now know every piece of matter can act like a particle or a wave depending on the conditions now, what is diffraction by itself? Diffraction is when you have a wave and after passing through a gap, the wave spreads out, goes outwards in this sort of semicircular direction, okay? So the smaller the gap uh, or the longer the wavelength, the bigger the diffraction. So you get more spreading out if the gap is smaller or if the wave wavelength is longer, okay? So again, all of the details and stuff for you to take notes are in these videos. You are not missing out if you go on these videos. That's the basics and that's actually everything you need to know at this A level as well. Okay, but you also need to know about this part, which is the dish design. So this dish, this dish design whoa, is when you use your knowledge of ref reflection and diffraction to... Um, to apply it in the everyday life. So for example, the antenna or when you're using radio telescopes or any of these things. So the bigger the dish that you have, the stronger the signal it can receive, which is good because there are going to be more radio waves collected and then reflected by the dish into the aerial where you can get the detection of the waves, okay? However, the bigger the dish, the smaller the focus as the waves are diffracted less because you have a uh, less diffraction, then the waves are not going to uh, change direction as much or spread as much, so the, small, the focus is smaller, which again is going to make it more difficult as well when you're trying to get a good signal. So in terms of dish design, you want to play around in between what is the bigger dish I can get, but still with a focus that is big enough for me to get enough of the waves or enough, um, yeah, enough waves being reflected, okay? And that is all that you need to know about wave properties. So we covered reflection, refraction and diffraction, although I would like you to go on these videos because it has all the details really and everything you need to know at this level. You are not missing out if you go on these videos. And then we have an application of the dish design. Up to my next video. Be happy and healthy. Bye.